Alright, so first off, um, this is going to be a reptile room update, not a full tour, so don't expect to see everybody. Um, just things that have changed down here in the past month, and there's quite a few things to go over. But before we start, I would like to um, send a shout out to all my subscribers. I've reached uh, 1,100 subscribers, or somewhere thereabouts. And uh, that's super exciting for me. I mean, it really motivates me to keep making these videos. So thanks for the support. I really appreciate it. And I never imagined I'd accumulate so many subscribers. I've only been doing this seriously for about a year. And I think when I started doing this as a herping channel, I maybe had 60 subscribers because I had been uploading a few fish videos over the last seven years or so. But uh, yeah, in the last year the channel's really blossomed and it's exciting. But to start off, probably the most exciting update I can give you is the new critters. And you can see a couple bins sitting right there. There is a habitat right there. And then way over there, there's a little tank sitting on my snake rack. And those are all new animals. So let's get started. So first off, uh, yeah, there was a reptile show in uh, April first so that's why there's all these new guys hanging out here um, I tried to refrain from buying too much but that doesn't always work out so we're gonna start off with this guy or girl I should say because I do believe it's a female and this is an albino American bullfrog isn't she beautiful I'm pretty sure it's a female I know you can tell by the size of the eardrum uh, and in the males it's significantly larger than in the females, so I think this one is a female. Either way, she is beautiful, and I'm really excited to have her. Uh, I'm not going to disturb her or poke her or anything, but I don't know if, you can pick it, if I can pick it up well on the camera here, but just look at those red eyes. Absolutely stunning. I've wanted these for a long time. Um, so I've had her for about a week. Yeah, a little over a week. And, um... You know, I still haven't seen her eat, so that has me a little concerned. Um, yeah. Hopefully, uh, she adjusts to her new home pretty soon. It's just a bin at the moment. There's a tub of water, a log, and I don't know what that little piece of plant's doing in there for. But, um, eventually she's going to go in a 40-gallon tank once that snake rack gets here. I've been waiting for the snake rack forever. I bought it on February 11th and it still hasn't gotten here so once that gets here she's gonna go in um, Cleo's tank. Cleo is a ball python she's, Cleo's gonna go in the rack and this bullfrog is gonna go in the tank. It's probably gonna be set up with more water than land area or I might try to do something fancy and like um, divide it in half or uh, like maybe a quarter of land and the rest of water. We'll see. I'm not sure yet but uh, you know just check that out yeah, granted she's more yellow than white, but she's now bino either way. Absolutely gorgeous. Moving on. Next new addition. This is a Colorado River Toad, or Sonoran Desert Toad, whichever you prefer to call it. Either way, it's a, it's a really cool big toad. The, well, I believe this is the largest native toad in North America. Uh, unless you count the cane toad as a native. I don't think... No, the cane toad's from South America. So it's an invasive... But either way, this, so this is the largest native toad. And just look at that thing. Look how wicked that is. And he's been eating... He's been eating great... He started eating immediately after I put him in this bin. And he's actually going to go in this bin that the bullfrog is in. Uh, once the bullfrog goes in the tank. I think. I haven't decided yet. Either way. I mean, it's just a simple setup. Cocoa earth. Um, some dirty water that needs to be cleaned. A piece of cork to hide in. And it's a happy toad. Look at that. It's a, definitely a unique looking animal. It's got more smooth skin than it does the bumpy traditional skin of a toad and it's it's very warty or not very warty I should say like a 
like a toad. Yeah, let me see if I can just... Look at that. That thing's a beast. Uh, next up we have the little tank that was sitting on the snake rack. <clears throat> Originally I was going to get a, a um, tarantula for this tank. But I don't know, I didn't see anything that really caught my attention. And I've been on an amphibian kick lately. Which will make some of my viewers happy. And got yet another toad. Now this one... Alright, let me just bring... See if we can get him into the light. There we go. So this is actually a, a southern toad. It's a native species. Ironically, um, all the frogs I picked up are native species, and uh, not not intentional. And this is a southern toad. Uh, this thing is adorable. I I absolutely love this little toad. Uh, they're not native to New York, but they do live um, from Virginia south to Florida and I think west to the Mississippi. But um, check out that little guy. It looks like a walnut. I think I'm going to name it Walnut. This is a super cool little toad. I love this little guy. And uh, he eats like a champ. And as you can see, he tolerates handling very well. Yeah, there's a little southern toad. Maybe not the most exciting thing, um, but you know, I like I like native species. What can I say? All right, and last but certainly not least, we have a mammal, and it's not every day that you go to a reptile show and come home with a mammal. But I cannot turn this little thing down. I've wanted one of these for a while now. Really cool little animal, and you would be forgiven for confusing it with like a, some kind of rodent, like a mouse or something. But this is actually an opossum. Yes, just like the ones we have here in the United States, only much smaller. This is a Brazilian short-tailed opossum from South America. And this one specifically is a female. Now these are, so these are our marsupial. They, but they don't have a pouch. Um, most marsupials like kangaroos, koalas, uh, opossums, you know, they have pouches. But the Brazilian short-tailed possum does not have a pouch. The babies just um, grab onto a nipple and hang there. And they're born about the, the size of a grain of rice. It's ridiculous. And as you can see, she didn't like being disturbed. She's not entirely uh, hand tame yet, but we're working on it. She's just a baby too, but she won't even get much bigger than this. And look at that thing. And when she opens her mouth at you, you can definitely see that <laughs> it's a possum. It looks just like a possum with that gaping mouth and it's really cool prehensile tail um, you know everything like a possum just in a smaller scale she's just a super cool little mammal um, and she loves to eat insects All right. so we got her a, a little super worm here she loves these things watch how voracious She dropped it. There she goes. She got it. She's got it. Check that out. Savage little creature. So cute and so terrifying. She primarily eats cat food, but insects are a pretty big part of her diet. Uh, she'll also eat some fruit and things like that. But yeah, I'm working on getting her hand tame because these guys, you know, they can be hand tamed and they'll just chill in your pocket and look these guys up. Just do some research on them. These are really cool little things. There's a cool video on YouTube of uh, someone has one of these. I don't remember what channel it is. And uh, it wraps up like these paper towels in its tail and uses its tail to carry stuff. So, so cool. So cool. So yeah, I'm not normally a mammal guy, but something like this, you just got to have if you're into uh, offbeat kind of pets. And yeah, she she does crap. Like, you wouldn't believe, and it's disgusting. But, uh, yeah, there's her setup. It's not bad. I think you did a pretty good job here. 
There's a little hammock hanging from the top of her screen. Yeah, I might throw some more stuff in there, get some more branches and stuff going on. Some more toys. Yeah, that is the Brazilian short tail possum. Still trying to think of a name for her. Um, my wife wants to name her Stella for some reason. I personally want to name her Bitey, which is a Simpsons reference. Yeah. Those are my reptile show pickups. No snakes, no lizards. Um, came up with three frogs and an opossum. There she is peeking out a little bit just now. Yeah, pretty crazy. Alright, so now for some updates. Um, I bought this thing a couple weeks ago to start keeping um, my frogs in, actually. The big frogs, the big fat frogs that don't do anything. African bullfrogs, there's one of them. And this is a pretty convenient setup, I think. I really, I'm really happy with, with this. There's the other one. And then, well, the cane toad's going to be hiding. But Tinkles is down there somewhere. There she is. So, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, it saves some space. It's easier to clean than tanks, you know. I thought it was a pretty clever idea. The big goldfish that I think was in my last update is doing good. Fins are growing back. Eyes are still cloudy. I think this goldfish might have uh, cataracts or something. Who knows how old it is. But it, it gets around fine. It eats well. Yeah, and you can see that the fins are healing up pretty nicely. And you can see that cloudy eye. That's a beast of a goldfish. And speaking of goldfish, there is yet another one. And this one is in pretty rough shape, it's true. Um, but this one was actually caught whilst fishing. My brother-in-law hooked this goldfish the other night. It was the only fish either of us caught. And uh, it was his first goldfish. I've never caught a goldfish. But they're invasive, so I wasn't going to put it back. And we brought it home. Yeah, so it's pretty beat up. But it's, uh, you know, it's a wild fish. And now it's uh, it looks pretty fat and plump, so I think it's it's uh, gonna be all right. But yeah, hopefully that tail heals up because that's pretty rough looking. Can I just talk about how fantastic these crayfish are for a minute? I picked them up at a at the pet store. They were gonna they were, came in with the feeder fish, and I was trying to feed them to to uh, Poncho here, the uh, loggerhead musk turtle. But he didn't eat them, and instead they live with him. And this one's turned blue, which is really cool, and no doubt means that it's a male. And these two face off all the time. I mean, that it's ridiculous. Like, Poncho will be eating his food, and the crayfish will come up behind him and, like, start poking at him. Look at that mug. And, uh, you know, the, the turtle will swing around, and the crayfish will, you know, lift up his claws, and... It's, it's, it's funny to watch the two of them interact. And then there's the other one who's, who's brown, but um, you know, maybe it means it's a female or something. I don't know much about crayfish. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty cool. Now I'm kind of hoping that they don't get eaten, and I don't think they will because they just keep getting bigger and bigger, and he, he has no interest in them at all. You frog people really like this video because uh, frogs feature pretty prominently in there. Uh, these are leopard frog tadpoles. Oh my god, I have so many leopard frog tadpoles. People, you wouldn't believe it. And this water does need to be changed, absolutely. But, um, I don't know what I'm going to do with all of them. I mean, I've been, I've been fishing them out periodically, throwing them in with turtles and fish and other uh, stuff that I have as like a, a food source. I kind of feel bad doing it, but there's just absolutely nothing I can do with all these leopard frog tadpoles. I can't sell them, I can't release them. So, it's pretty cool watching them grow though. I actually have quite a few in here with the firebelly toads. And let's try to find a, uh, a nice specimen. Get a good shot. There's one. That's as far as I can zoom in. It's the best we're going to get. But yeah, they, they grow, man. They're growing fast. I think I see one back there too. I see the tail waving around. 
yeah, there's one back there. And I put put a handful in here, and they're doing these ones are probably doing the best out of all the ones I have. But of course they would. They have this gigantic plant and all this stuff to feed off of, and the the fire belly toads don't seem to bother them. And as you can see too, this particular thing is just full of uh, mystery snails. Mystery snails for days, including like all life cycles or all life stages. I mean. Like there's some pretty decent sized ones and there's these itty bitty ones like that. And then there's an egg sack up there. So yeah. Pretty cool. This is actually a really fun tank to watch. This is one of my favorites, oddly enough. And all it has in there are fire belly toads, leopard frog tadpoles, uh, and snails. And I, I had some ghost shrimp, but I haven't seen one in a long time. I think they're all gone now. There might be one still kicking around in there. There's a uh, big mama looking fat and happy. Just look at her. Isn't she gorgeous? Just absolutely perfect looking. Adore her to death. Um, at this point, she's my oldest lizard. And um, as you know, she, well, you know, if you're not new to the channel, she had a mate, Greedo. He died, oh gosh, like six months ago. And she's still in laying fertile eggs. And I feel bad because a couple of them did just hatch recently. I took them to the show and I already got rid of them, so I don't have any shots of those babies for you. Sorry, guys. But there are two more eggs in the incubator that should hatch any time now, and I'll, and I'll be sure to put them on my channel when they do. And speaking of eggs, there are also a couple um, crusty eggs. And then um, I have to walk over the incubator here. There is a fat tailed gecko egg up in here. But it's doing very poorly. I don't think it's going to make it. Which is a shame because I still have yet to hatch any eggs from her. But there's the uh, day gecko eggs. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about, about that. Um, I don't know. She hasn't laid any eggs since that set. And that was a couple months ago. So she might be done. She might be dried up now. But i um, really excited about the Crestes. These are my first ones of this year. Seamus is out. So let's just get a good shot of him. Why not? It's not often that you see one of the snakes actually out and around. And he, of course, is a western hognose snake. Is there a cuter snake than that? Just look at that face. Right next to him I have my... I've decided to start trying to breed super worms. So I have a super worm colony started up. And you can see there's uh, some... Super ones in there, and some more in here, and then I actually have a few adults in here that I already um, pupated. Now, to, to pupate these guys, I've been using this uh, fish tank, um, not fish tank, uh, tackle box, little compartment box thing, and you can see when they're curled up like that, they're, they're going to turn soon. Uh, but they do have to be isolated in order to turn into beetles, is my is my understanding. So I have to keep them separated. So it's a pretty handy way to do it. All right, now this isn't like really a big deal per se. Like it's not really. I mean, it kind of relates, I guess, to the reptile room because it's in it. But I I am very excited about it because not only do I now have a couch down here, but I have a bookshelf down here, and it is just chock full of all of my hurt books. So we got some turtle books, frog books, and snake books and stuff. Look at all of that. Oh my god, I love my herp books almost as much as my herps. And uh, yeah, some of them are about general care and maintenance and stuff like that. And some of them are just, you know, there's a few non-relevant books down here, I guess. They didn't have room for uh, upstairs. And you'll see that there's some uh, other books about other things too. Some rabbit books and small animals and fish books too. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I can just sit down here, watch my uh, my big fish tank over there, or the turtles or whatever, and uh, grab out a book, pop a beer. Oh man. I spend about as much time down here as I do in my actual house. Okay, and the last thing for you guys, um, the rabbit. Yeah, my goodness. Nothing has brought so much controversy to my channel. A herping channel, no less, uh, than this rabbit. Oh my goodness. Um, 
So back in January, it was on my. I did a full pet room tour, and the rabbit was on it. But since the rabbit is in a four x two cage and not a four x four cage, some people just flipped out. And look, look, look how much space the rabbit has. Uh, this this fence is not new. I've had this about since I've got the rabbit. Just not always up. Now it's always up because I moved the cage to a more convenient spot. I had to switch some things around. The, the cage used to be kind of tucked under the table there, and then I'd have the fence come out and around. But then it get, made it hard to walk through when I was doing videos or cleaning fish tanks, so I would take down the fence. But this is what I'm talking about, guys. Look, look. <laughs> the rabbit has plenty of space. Don't worry about my rabbit. Uh, there he is right there. And yeah, now the fence is up 24-7. He can come and go as he pleases out of the, the fence. Uh, he doesn't want to come out now because he's a little nervous. I mean, that, that cage... At the end of the day, is his basically his his burrow. You know that's where he feels safe. So that's where he's gonna go when, um, you know, if it gets too busy down here for his liking. And I'm walking around the camera talking, so he's gonna sit in there. But he does come out, as you can see. He's got some collard greens he's been chewing on, and uh, yeah, I should get some more toys in there for him. He's annihilated his uh, little hay barn thing. So yeah, there's the rabbit, guys. I hope that this puts an end to uh, the the issues concerning this rabbit. But uh, most of the people that complained in that video probably aren't going to watch those this video because they're not my subscribers. They're just people that saw it and didn't like it. And uh, yeah, I mean, maybe the rabbit was in like five minutes of that video. I don't know. Either way, it doesn't matter. There he is. There's Rupert, and he is. All right. So I'll leave you off here with a. A little bit of uh, some fish tank action. Uh, that's it for this video, guys. Um, that's my April update. I will be doing a tour as soon as I get the snake rack in set up and everybody where they're going to be. I'm really excited about it. It's going to change this basement a lot. It's going to open up a lot of space. It's going to be pretty cool. So, um, yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for your support. And uh, I'll see you next time, probably out in the field herping.